Hello everyone, my name is Michael and welcome to the second episode of this MongoDB slash Node.js tutorial. In this video, we will be going through schemas and everything around schemas. So yeah, with that said, let's get into the video. So first of all, what I want to do is create another file which will handle the Mongoose connection. So in order to do that, let's create a folder which will say mongoose and here let's create a file called index.js there we will copy this code and paste it and that's because i want it to make it simpler now what we will do is require that file so we'll do dot and basically we'll require mongoose we don't have to do slash index.js because whenever we do this it automatically goes to an index.js file if there is one so because we are using index, it already knows where to go. So by requiring it, it's like running this code here. It's the same thing. Now what we will do is create the schema. And again, I would like to create another file for that. So let's create a folder. And here we will say models. Basically schemas are called models. So yeah. And inside the models, let's create a model and we'll call it the user.js model so let's here define a user model and what we will do is we'll say const first of all we'll require mongoose but i'm not sure if we have to use that actually we probably do com schema and then it will do that to mongoose.schema so whenever we call schema it will basically call mongoose.schema and here we will say const user which is basically the user schema and then we will create a new schema which is basically a function and in it we will pass it a parameter which is an object and inside that object we will pass the values so how we do that it's simple so first of all let's define our values Let's say we have a full name for our user. Let's do it like that. And our full name is a string. So we'll say it's a string and it will basically expect a string. Then we have an email, which is again the string. We have, let's say, a phone number. And here you can put a string, but let's try number or an age. For example, it will be equal to number. Then we can have a value called favorite movies not a movie but movies and that can be an array so if you get how it works basically you define a value and then you define the type of the value so whenever you expect your value to be a string then you should put a string now what if you don't know what it will be it could be an array it could be a string it could be whatever you want let's say older here and there is a value called schema dot types dot mixed and what that basically expects is everything so whatever you put other to be then it will accept it so let's say you want to define your array even more give it more information about how your your array will be so how you expect your array to be so first of all we'll create an array and we will create an object if we expect an array of objects and then what we can do is give this object some values so let's say we expect a text actually a title and we expect a title to be a string and then we have a year the movie year which we expect it to be a number and then we might have something else so you get the point you can define it as much as you want in yeah, that's basically it or let's say we, you have a date date of registration and that could be an object and you can pass it some fields let's say you want to pass it that the type is date and the default is date not now so what is this exactly right here we are not defining an object to values but instead we are passing some options for this field right here and whenever you pass the option called type you basically tell it the type of value this is so it's the same as passing it directly so string it's the same as doing type inside of an object then string so here we are defining date but we use that whenever we want to pass more values and then we have the default value which basically says if we don't pass a value it will take the default value which is date.now so it will take the current date and there is a lot more options you can pass here and you can see all of that in the documentation which will be down in the description so make sure you check it out and it has everything that you will need to learn about schemas then what we will do 
is we will say user actually we have to rename this to user schema so let's do that so user schema and here what we will do is const user equal to mongoose.model then the model name which is basically the collection name and we we'll, we should do that to lowercase because that's what i like but you can do whatever you want so basically this is this will be the collection name and if you don't have a collection already created whenever you create a document it will create that collection automatically and here we pass as a second parameter the user schema and what we will do now is model module dot exports equal user so we can use it in other files so what that basically does is it exports this value and whenever i require it and i'll be able to use it as a module so let's go back to index and what we can do is const user equal to require models user and now because we exported the user we can use it right here and let me show you now how you can create a document so what we will do is const new user equal new user and then inside that we will call the function and we will pass some options and basically the options we will pass is the values right here but instead of the type of each value we will pass the value so let me give you an example for full name what we will do is pass the value which can be john doe and then let's say we have an email or so we will pass the email john at john at gmail.com and for the phone number we can pass an example phone number and if you leave any values empty it will basically not show them in the database it will they will be undefined and that's basically it which will not give you an error if you don't fill all the details it doesn't expect you to fill all the details and there we go so now to save this user what we will do is new user dot save and then we can also pass a callback but it's not required but let's do that so we can have an error and we can have also the user so what we will do is if there is an error return console.log an error or else console.log the user actually let's do that there we go so let's run it and see what will happen so it's the node index so what it did right now is it tried to create the user before it actually connected to the database and we can fix that by passing a slip function and let me show you how you can do that so first of all let's create a function called const main equal that will be a function and we will be it will be an asynchronous function and here first of all let's define a const slip function it will, it will basically take some milliseconds and it will time out those milliseconds so we will say await sleep and we will tell it to sleep for 10 and then try to create the user because we basically know that within the 10 seconds it will already connect to the database now let's run this main function and let's run the app and there we go it connected to mongodb and it gave us the answer for our user and as you see for our for our date of registration because we didn't pass it a date of registration it by default created the date of registration which is the current date now let's go back to our database and let's see if it works so let's refresh and there we go it created the database which is youtube and if you saw the previous episode we did that on purpose and then it created the collection which is called users and we did define it to user so if we go back here we told it the collection should be user and not users but what it does it renames it and adds an s to the end unless you predefined it to users it will keep it users and there we go this is our document so yeah that's basically it for this video if you enjoyed this video where we learned how you can create a schema and how you can create a new document using the schema i'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss my next episode on how you can update your documents delete them and also fetch them